Hey, so I uh, just wanted to run through a few things uh, in the first VINSEM worksheet that we haven't gotten through that can be a little tricky towards the end. So over here on the one side, I have the worksheet actually pulled up. Uh, you should probably want that in a bigger font. And then on the other side, I have my VINSEM worksheet. Um, so uh, we did this before, but just in case, the, we've run our simulation, which means we click on the green arrow. And sometimes this pops up, but you say yes. Cool. Um, nothing in particular changes, and so that means we didn't have any problems. Um, then if we want a graph of the population, we can click on population and click on graph. And we get this lovely graph of our population. Uh, you might notice I've changed a few things so that it works better with the worksheet. For example, I'm only going for 12 hours here. So one of the questions we have is how long does it take the population to double? So we started in 100. So the real question is how long till we get to 200? Um, and we can't tell exactly here, but it looks like it's um, maybe about seven, seven and a half hours. So um, you can eyeball these things from the graph, but not get an exact value. All right, so the next thing to do is to look at the next part, which is um, we can create fancier tables um, by going to the control panel. So the control panel is over here. I need it to be a little bit bigger. So here we are, the control panel is all the way over on this side. And this allows us to create fancy graphs or do scaling things. I usually in this class, we just go to graphs. So um, uh, we can, for example, uh, create a graph, we can create a new graph and call it um, short time, whatever we want, but maybe we only go on to go from zero out minutes to 10 minutes rather than to 12. Um, and so this X is our horizontal minimum and max. And then for our X axis, we can have time. And then for our y-axis, we can have population. Um, and notice that we can select a data set. Um, we can use minimums and maximums for that population. And that may be helpful to you as the semester goes on. Um, but in this case, we can then see what that looks like. Um, now we're only going for 10 hours rather than for 12. So uh, just kind of something that you might want to be doing later on. Make that a little bigger. Okay. Uh, the next thing in um, the worksheet talks about uh, maybe wanting to have growth and population or population and change in population. And so we can select both of these by hitting population and then shift and hit change in population and that will graph both of them together. This one isn't particularly interesting because the curves uh, basically have the same shape. They just have different units. So on the left side, we have bacteria per hour. On a, that would be for a change in population. Notice its units are here. And then on the right side, we have bacteria. And again, that would be for a population. So useful things we can do. Closing up a bunch of these. Okay. Uh, we can, remember we were looking to see when we would double the population and we thought it was somewhere between seven and, and seven and a half hours. So a useful way to find that information out is to look at a table rather than a graph. And so Vensum has two different tables that'll show you. This is the first one. I don't find it especially useful. But the second one, the table time is nice and vertical. It's more compact, and I find it a lot easier to use. 
Um, so we can see that we are going to double going from 100 to 200 sometime between seven and eight hours. That's not very specific, but we're only going up in units of one hour, so we can't be more specific in this example. Uh, if we want to be more specific, we can go back up to our model, go to our settings, and here we have time steps of one. That's why we're only seeing what happens at seven hours and what happens at eight hours. We can make that quite a bit smaller. Uh, you can type in a number if you want, rerun it. And now when I look at the table, it's a lot more careful. So it's going up, I think, in units of sixteenths of an hour. And it takes us a little longer, but we can scroll down and be saying that right here, it goes from uh, under 200 to over 200. And notice that's changed a little bit, and that's because when, we, um, when the time step becomes smaller, our model is more accurate. All right. I'm just looking through the rest of the um, worksheet probably the last thing that would be useful to see demonstrated is this notion of input and output table uh, tools. That's the IO object. And so we can put that anywhere. And um, with input output objects, you can have an, a slider. Um, you can do this workbench tool, which uh, is a little bit more sophisticated and you can have a custom graph that's displayed all the time in your window. We're going to do a slider for our constant and we'll change our growth rate. And uh, remember our growth rate was 0.1. So let's go from 0 to 0.5. And what happens then if we synthesim, we can change our growth rate by sliding our so that's just changing this coefficient for growth rate and um, when we do that we can see that when our original graph uh, was when the growth rate was 0.1 but if we make the growth rate bigger that would be the blue curve and now you can see it pulling away from the red curve um, Again, this is not something that's super useful at this stage of the game, but when you do more sophisticated models can be really nice because you might have a question which says what happens as you change the growth rate? What does it do to um, the population or, or whatever it happens to be? Uh, to get out of that, you just say stop and now you're back to normal. So that looks like about all of the advanced things in the first tutorial and um, we can go from there. Thanks a lot.